Well, the Cookie Monster came in and got out of the inning. A strikeout and a fly to left. Pretty good relief pitching. Second and third, one out. Drop down sidearm to get Kozlowski. And here's a little Palmer base hit to left to start the bottom of the sixth inning. Palmer started the fifth with a single to right. Palmer now has three consecutive hits. He scored two runs after striking out in the first. The Tallahassee man has doubled the left, singled the right, and now singled the left. But Napoleon, the coach there with him, took care of that 0 for 9 streak, turned it around to a 3 for 3 streak. This is still Wickander against Tettleton, who is already hit two home runs in the game. Tettleton has hit a home run to left, a solo, then a two-run shot to left center, and then a strikeout. Ball one and no strikes. The story on Pavlik for the day, he gives up five runs, of which four were earned on five hits, and he could be nine and one. And the count is at one and one now to Tettleton. Wickander out of Grand Canyon College, which is in Phoenix. In a IA power. First major league save in 1992 against the Rangers. And the one one pitch. And there's a strike. And Wickander, of course, one of the uh, friends of uh, Steve Olin of. Uh, the Indians uh, when that tragic accident came in 1993 uh, Tom and he's been very troubled and trying to hang on to his baseball life since then one two and that's outside two two and that they have they were very close friends and it really affected him deeply so much so that his career was a little bit in doubt yeah he disappeared for a while and uh, again uh, Olin killed in that boating accident that this was his best friend Kevin Wickander 2-2, two, two, and that's high ball, 3-3-2. Three, three and two. And they, they thought a change of venue was needed. He was with the Indians. He went to Cincinnati, and then last year pitched with Detroit and Milwaukee, eight games of the Brewers, so a little change of scenery has perhaps helped. Mickey Tuttle in at ball, three and strike two. And he has walked him, fell off the mound right there, ball four, so Tuttle is on base, and runners now at first and second. And here is Mark McLemore. Oh, Garner with his club now five runs down. Last night when they finished, they were ten runs ahead. There have been some major run productions by each club in this series. So here is Mark McLemore with nobody out. Ten to five, the Rangers lead in the bottom of the sixth inning today, and there is a strike. Rangers lead right after this game for Boston. Well, this is a pretty close game when Wickander came that, in. A couple men on, it was four to two. And error and a couple of walks made it six to two, and then Buford's grand slam made it ten to two. Oh, and two the count. We are getting some information here to pass on in a moment. Here's the 0-2, and that is a strike, and, they, and um, Mark McLemore is out. Got caught looking at a Wickander pitch. One away, and that'll bring up Dave Valley. Trying to listen to John Blake in his announcement, Mark. It sounded like Paul Rodriguez was in the on-deck circle. Buford came by, and somehow his bat grazed him above the eye. Does not appear to be serious, but he has gone to the hospital for precautionary x-rays hopefully there won't be anything come out of that yeah I'm not sure when that happened I didn't Must see have it happened on Buford's way up to the plate here's a bouncer up the middle by Valley and here comes a run home and the Rangers have one of those back good throw to the plate but way late and Dave Valley has his fourth run batted in for Texas boy now Valley definitely has to stay in the game or Tuttleton will catch which may not be all that bad, but he hasn't done it yet this year. But this is a base hit for Valley, and the Rangers now have 11 runs as they score Palmer. The Wickander's really struggling. 
with his control and when he throws a strike the Rangers have jumped on it base hit and an RBI right there for Dave Valley 11 5 the Rangers lead and here's Warren Newsom and there is a strike you know we, we try to check up on this we don't know but it might have come on the grand slam where the bat was flipped and uh, Rodriguez apparently was walking up toward the plate to congratulate people on home runs or out of the on deck circle and the bat apparently grazed him and no one saw it because they were watching the Buford home run but Pudge apparently is all right but they're just going to make sure Houston a fielder's choice and a couple of walks today he walked with the bases loaded so he's got to run batted in and he misses that pitch from Wickander who can be very tough on lefties at times as he was right there so there is two out two strikeouts here for Wickander along with a couple of singles a walk and a run given up well the stuff from Wickander is fine he just got Newsom very easily the inning before with the bases loaded he walked them so when he has thrown good strikes good pitcher strikes he's been pretty tough to hit that's his Two third strikeout since he's been in there. Elster, a pop up that is foul and back to the crowd. And scrambled for it there. Oh, they are going after it hard. But he's got it. We play in the bottom of the sixth, 11 5 Texas. If you're just joining us and you have missed some mammoth home runs, Tuttleton has hit two. For a total of three runs batted in, Buford has hit one where they were loaded. It's a nice day. Four RBIs on one swing. Damon Buford's RBI total doubled for the year on one swing. It went from four to eight. That's a good day. Elster 0 for 2. He likewise has walked with the bases loaded for his 43rd run batted in today. And here's a hard hit ball up the middle. It high hops the shortstop into center field, and the Rangers get the 12th run. Boy, these two teams really knock each other over, don't they? 14 runs for the Brewers last night, 12 this afternoon now for Texas. This play was one that Listash had a shot at. It looked like it hit the lip and bounced straight up in the air past him. They made it go into center field for a base hit. There's the big bounce. Listash was over far enough to make the play, but once it bounced, he couldn't get that high. So another run coming home right here as Tendleton will score. Just about everybody has scored a run today for the Rangers, and here's Damon Buford at the plate. This is an interesting book. Everyone has scored a run that was in the original lineup except Pudge Rodriguez. So eight of the starters have scored. Palmer and Tettleton have scored three. They're going to score another run. They've just neutralized the three as the ball hops away from Levis and comes back to the right side. And Wickander got a chance to get out of the inning. Rough inning continues. Elster down to second base. Valley has scored on a wild pitch. And it is now 13 to 5, Texas. When one of these teams wins, you can't get too cocky because the next night you'll probably get beaten by about the same number of runs. 13 to 5 now. Well, it wasn't a pretty sight last night on the Rangers' behalf, and today it's not a very pretty sight for the Brewers. There's been runs scored on errors and wild pitches, grand slams. Well, Buford swung at some crazy pitches today. That one way up and away. One, he hit out ankle high for a grand slam. This time he strikes out swinging. But that is it in the inning. The Rangers get three more runs, and it's 13 to 5 Texas after six innings. Now this from your local station. This is Molly Thomason here with the Texas Rangers. You any good at Sega Baseball? The best there ever was at Sega Baseball. Yeah, right. I think I'll be Texas. Okay. All right, here we go. Now batting, Mark McLemore. Hey, no spitballs. Come on, give me a good one to hit. That ball oh, no, it's all run. Oh, oh run. Du, 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 du. Shot. Celebrate July 4th at the ballpark at the Miller Bear Coosie and Fireworks Nights.
Hello, people. What a guy here. You know, because it's a bigger burger, you get more fresh fixins on your water burger. Like four pickles instead of just three. Three tomatoes instead of just two. Plus fixins nobody but Whataburger has. Like jalapenos. Fans, Twib is 20 and better than ever. This Week in Baseball is celebrating its 20th season with the best in baseball. Twib has it all. Exclusive footage and interviews, behind-the-scene features, celebrity fan profiles, side-splitting bloopers, and spectacular plays. So stay on top of the best in baseball. Tune in, Twib. Saturday before the game on Texas 39. Mark and Tom, I'm in Lee Speakerman's office. Thought he might know where McConnell and Burchett are, and he's not here either. I think there's a day trip to Six Flags that somebody forgot to tell us about. I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. What's that Lynn Productions truck up there? Do you think there's any chance they're in the truck? I'm going to check. Back to you guys. It's going to take a while. He will find them somewhere. He uh, is the persistent Mr. Radigan. We have uh, apparently cleared up when Rodriguez was hit. Not many people saw this at all. Well, it happened in the on-deck circle. Buford was going up to hit and took one more practice swing. Rodriguez walking out of the dugout into the on-deck circle. Didn't anticipate Buford's swing. Buford Ooh. didn't see Rodriguez. And contact was made above the eye. It doesn't sound serious, but again, precautionary x-rays are being taken just to make sure. But we, we definitely didn't see it from up here. We had no idea what happened. Mr. Ash fouls a pitch off. So in other words, now this would have been right before the Grand Slam. Elster had walked. The crowd was going crazy because it was a run coming home. He had walked with the bases loaded and Buford took one more swing. Boy, that's how one of the bat boys really got uh, hurt badly a few years ago in Tulsa. Walked into a guy swinging in the end deck circle. Actually, it was, it was the Tulsa team in Jackson. Oh, man. One got away from Dennis. I don't know where that hit Listash. It looked up in the vicinity of his head. Looks like he's okay. You get a look at it. Looked like it hit off his left shoulder. Fortunately, he was able to get out of the way. Ball thrown pretty hard, too. That I, I happened to be in the ballpark, Mark, in Jackson when that happened. Whitney Harry, the Ranger hitter, took one more practice swing after a guy had just gotten a base hit. And the bat boy raced out of the dugout to get the bat and ran right into a full swing. And there was silence in the stands. You really have to be careful for your little leaguers, oh, was, too. When you're taking terrible. swings, uh, make sure that... Don't the go near the on-deck hitter. You gotta make sure you watch that bat and that baseball. It can be some dangerous things, but just make sure that he's dropping it and going up to hit before you get into that on deck circle. It was shortly after that that they required the bat boys to wear helmets. You'll notice when you come to the ballpark that all the bat boys are wearing helmets now. Vignette, a high pop to Dean Palmer, and Palmer makes the catch. 13 to 5, Texas, one out, one on in the seventh inning. We take for granted. Uh, Palmer's held this year almost now. He's there every day. And Rodriguez, who has been able to catch when needed. These are two valuable players for the Rangers that have been able to play whenever needed for the most part this year. The one time Palmer couldn't play was early in the year. And remember who took his spot. Now that's turned into rather an interesting story talk about taking those swings when people run in front of them. The scariest thing that ever happened to me happened in the clubhouse at Shea Stadium when I played with the Mets. It was up in the up in the clubhouse in about the eighth inning swinging a bat just in case I had to pinch hit. And I was near the entrance to the clubhouse and I took one more swing which was a full swing and my son Tim who was at the ballpark with me that day was about seven or eight years old opened the door and I didn't see the door open and raced underneath my swing and as I swung the bat 
unfortunately he wasn't very tall he ran underneath the swing and if i had swung a little bit lower who knows what would have happened so that taught me a good lesson and i hate to see anything happen like that around someone swinging a bat this is Seitzer, the little bloop to left center. Boy, the Rangers just can't put these guys away. They keep being pesky. Each team has had a three-run inning recently in the sixth for the Brewers and in the sixth for the Rangers. Now we go to the seventh. The ballpark in Arlington is a great place to plan your next group activity. Groups at 25 or more receive a dollar off per ticket at special group sections. Watch for special half-price group nights, too. Groups of 40 or more get special seats for half-price. Call 273-5000 and ask for group sales. Here now is Dave Nilsson. Rangers 13 to 5, one out, two on, seventh inning. Dennis Cook in relief of Roger Pavlik, who went five and a third with four earned runs, five overall on five hits, throws good fastball that Nilsson missed. Nilsson wearing out the Rangers. 0 for 2 today, but 7 for 20 against him this year with a lot of runs batted in. He's now batting 364 for the year. Rangers have three home runs today. Brewers have one from Greg Vaughn. There is Mickey Tedlin who has two home runs already today. Three RBIs, and there's Grand Slam Buford in center. Hit the Rangers' fourth slam of the year. All have been at the park. One ball and two strikes. Buford has four, Tettle and three. Elster has two RBIs. Newsom, Valley, and Palmer all have one, and then one scored on a wild pitch. And uh, that's the day at 13 runs. They've got more runs than hits. Took to the Australian board and Dave Nixon. And he struck him out. Two out. Rangers haven't gotten Nielsen out very often in his career. Had a little bit of success today. He's gotten out on an error and walk. That's a good pitch by Dennis Cook. Nielsen has a good swing at it, but Cook throws it by him. Nielsen's not very happy. So now one more, and the Rangers will hang on to an eight-run lead to the stretch seven. Vaughn waiting. And there's a strike on the corner. On this next road trip, the Rangers have a late afternoon game Saturday. It's actually a 4.05 Texas start and a 12 o'clock start Texas time on Sunday. So two of the games will be seen late afternoon and one just about noon. 0 and 1. The rest are night affairs. And Vaughn sits down at the plate. Boy, Cook can be a little wild, can he? Well, he's normally not this wild. He's <laughs> struggling with some of his pitches, and unfortunately, he's struggling up and in. You hate to see pitches up and in at people's heads. And Dennis is not trying to do that with a couple men on in this kind of a ball game. Nothing has happened in the previous two games to indicate any kind of brushback pitches. These pitches have just gotten away from Dennis. One ball and one strike. And a big high pop-up that should carry back it out of play. And it does. They scramble down the line. Some bare-handed guys down there all giving it a shot. Vaughn, 52 runs batted in. That puts him in the top nine in the league. Palmer has reached the half century mark today. He is the first Ranger at 50. There's Dean, who has a double back in the third inning, and then three straight hits for the day, and three runs scored. The one two. Two balls and two strikes. Thrown a bit cloudy at the ballpark. Cool things off it just a little bit. Has. It is pretty good. Dennis Cook on the way to Greg Vaughn. And he's high again. Ball three. Rangers at the moment don't have anyone throwing in the bullpen. They've gone Pavlik five and a third. 
Cook now for one and one third. It's partly cloudy sky now and no sunshine at the moment. Big crowd. We don't have the announcement on this 105 start afternoon. 3 2. Runners go with two out. Vaughn drills one foul. Rangers on the road have been one under this year. So most of their damage has come at the ballpark. Trying to go 27 and 10 today. And 5 and 1 as they end the homestand. Seventh inning, Rangers 13, the Brewers 5. Runners will go again with two out and a 3 2 pitch. And the bases will now be loaded for John Jaha. Johnny Oates, Dick Bosman saying this game's taking a long time. Let's put him away. Jaha had the three grand slams last year. So he has a potential game. to have a little ugliness written into it. It has the potential disaster written around it, doesn't it? A walk, a hit by a pitch, blooper, bases loaded. That hit by pitch is a tough way to start an inning, and that's what Cook did here. So here's Jaha, one for three. And they are full, and there is a ball. The Brewers had 10 grand slam home runs last year, which tied a record. They were the team of slams. And here they are now. They offensively tied the major league record, and Jaha had 30% of them. So they had big innings last year. That's 40 runs right there. Boy. 10 grand slam home runs by the Brewers. And here is the Jaha log with the bases loaded. I don't know that we've ever seen Dennis Cook this year struggle like he is right now with his control. We've seen him walk a guy, but he's been way out of the strike zone with four or five different pitches. Looks a little frustrated right now. Having trouble getting his breaking ball over. Ball two. Crowd getting a little antsy. Dennis is usually very effective throwing cut fastballs and fastballs into right-hand hitters. Today he's tried it a couple of times and he's hit Listash and almost hit Vaughn up near the head and that's part of his effectiveness to be able to get the ball in. Today he's not been un unable to do that. Rangers have scrambled the bullpen and we get Jeff Russell up for the second time. Well Cook gave up a run in two innings against the Blue Jays on Sunday. Overall Dennis Cook two runs in his last nine innings coming into this game. Ball two and strike one. Pops him up. This could be the inning. Somebody catch this. Elster toward the line looking skyward and he's got it. So this rough inning is over. They did not score. They leave him loaded and we head to the stretch sub it. Rangers up in front again. They lead Milwaukee 13 to 5. It's been 25 years of love From Southwest to you Just listen to the sound of the 737s above You're hearing 25 years of love And it's been 25 years of love The kind of love that's true 25 years of love You gotta get dirty, you know? If you go through life just sticking to the roads and if you're designed to be off-road, then use it. Getting dirty is tons of the fun. I think it's a, it's a sort of, it's a mental cleansing, if you will. Cleaning your insides while dirtying your outsides. And that's what Chevron with Techron's all about. It helps keep my engine clean and emissions low. No gasoline cleans your engine better than Chevron with Techron. Chevron, simply smarter. Man, what a rush. I liked it then, I like it now. I remember where I was at that one moment, a special song would come on. Bad Company, Led Zeppelin's Easy Top. You should listen to KZPS if you want to hear the music you grew up with. I was raised on classic rock. Eric Clapton. Eagles. I love the doors. Oh man, I love this song. 92.5. There's really not another source for classic rock and now. It's nothing but classic rock. Turn the radio up, roll the windows down, open the sunroof, and go. 
Afternoon coverage of Rangers baseball is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. And by Sony Discman Portable CD Players. We are headed to the bottom of the seventh inning. It will be Frazier, then Greer, and Palmer. Again, Pudge Rodriguez was hit by the bat of Buford in the on-deck circle and left the ball game in that fifth inning. Buford then went up and hit a grand slam home run. It has really turned dark here at the ballpark, and we do understand there are some showers west of Armington. Here is strike one as we start the seventh with Frazier, who is 0 for 1 with a line out to center. So we've gone from brilliant sunshine to a bit overcast. And a line drive to the shortstop, who has just come into the game. That is Mark Loretta. This dash has gone to left, and Loretta takes a few steps over and makes the catch, and there's one away. There's this dash now in left. And Loretta, the shortstop, has it put out. One gone in the seventh inning for Rusty Greer. And a new catcher into this game. And there's a strike going on. Is that a new catcher in this game? Yeah, that's Matheny. Oh, it is. Okay. Because Miski pinch hit for Levis. That's right. and won the count and a big high pop this is Vina calling and there is out number two and there are two up and two down as Frazier has popped the short and Greer has popped the second so Matheny catching and he makes the catch there and now here is Dean Palmer so Kevin Wickander who had a rough sixth inning Tries to straighten things out here. Again, we've talked about how many lefties that they have. He comes to Palmer for ball one. You know, working on a string of three consecutive hits, and the average goes to 273. He right now has added nine points to today's batting average. He came in at 264, and with a three for four, he is now at 273. Now it's 3 and 0. Oh. Tettleton is next, so Mickey with a chance for some big numbers today if Palmer should reach and he hits here in the seventh inning. Otherwise, he would lead off an inning. And Palmer is aboard, and here comes Tettleton. So Mickey at the plate. Tettleton coming into the year had homered in a game twice nine different times so he's never had a three home run day and here is Tuttlin who has done quite a job this year nine coming in and at the moment he has his third two home run game of the year so he's got 12 now in his career but again, he is charting new territory if he should hit one here. He scored three runs today. He was four for 32 when the day started. He homered to left and hit a two-run home run to left center, then struck out, then walked and scored. So a big day for Tuttleton. No Ranger has hit three home runs in a game this year. And no Ranger has ever hit Who was the last three. to do it? The last to hit three home runs in a game? I would have to say... Larry Parrish? Juan Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. On that eight RBI game. That, to what me, I remember a Mark's moment. I do, too. So you Juan, Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. Ball two and strike one. The other question would be, how many have ever done it? Well, you, you know, know why don't you Parrish keep did. asking these questions? And well, I'm, I'm just, you know, it, it is 13 to 5. Hey, pick a question. And I try it. to ask the man that I know has that answer. Pick a you get one question and then I could ask it. those to other people and they just look at you dumbfounded. I ask you and I see the wheels begin to turn. The wheels and the pages begin to turn. I'll get it for you. 
This is a drive to right and toward the corner. A nice running catch by Nilsson as he goes toward the board. We'll talk about home runs when we come back, but the Rangers are out of the seventh, and Tedlin stays with two home runs. It's 13-5 Texas. You're watching the Lynn Rangers Television Network. This is a truck's worst nightmare. Boulders stacked 500 feet high, then surrounded by a moat filled with alligators. A 10,000 volt fence and the defensive line of the 1939 University of Northern Montana Bobcats. Can any truck conquer this beast? Who cares? Can it haul a bunch of two by fours? The new Isuzu Ombre does what a truck is supposed to do. See the new Ombre at the Great Isuzu Clearance event going on now. When it comes to pointing out that a different auto insurance company could save you money, you know your agent's hands could be tied. Howdy, I'm Al Banker. I'm one of the area's largest independent insurance agents, which means I can offer you insurance from hundreds of companies and probably save you some money. I can also help you with affordable home, business, and health insurance. So call me at 1-800-USA-18 today, and I'll get my hands on a policy that will save you money. Where the guys get called in when the heat gets turned up. Now, five times a week. I'm a police officer. Call. Top Cops. Weekday afternoons at 5.30. You are there. You guys are giving us a hard time. As it happens. The real stories of the Highway Patrol. Weeknights at 6 on Texas 39. Hi, this is Craig James with Texas Rangers manager Johnny Oates. Can you explain this team's success? Yes, I can. In the dugout every Sunday before the game on Texas 39. We head to the eighth inning, 13-5 Texas. The search for John Radigan's friends continues. Let's join John. Mark and Tom, it doesn't take me long, just about the whole game before I finally found these guys. They're in our brand new state-of-the-art truck. Normally we'll use this on the road, but since it's brand new, we're just using it here to get the bugs worked out. Boy, am I glad I found these. Oh, boy. Bad mistake. Mark and Tom, back to you guys. John doesn't seem to be wanted wherever he's gone today. The technical people don't want him hanging around much while... Yeah, just find a seat out in the home run porch and watch the ball game. Here is Jeff Cirillo to lead it off against the new pitcher, Jeff Russell, and there's strike one. Well, Lynn Productions has the beautiful new studios here at the ballpark that we usually work out of that are state-of-the-art. We're the second team to do it. I think Toronto has an in-the-park, tremendously new technical studio, and now we do. And we have this fabulous truck that's been built that will take on the road. New pitcher is Jeff Russell. There are his numbers, one and one, 379 ERA. Former stopper for the Rangers, now pitching in setup relief. All-time Rangers save leader and the all-time Tigers save leader, Mike Kenneman, now support that bullpen late. So one good-looking young hitter. He is Cirillo. triple and a double today and in between a fly ball to center. He is now 11 for 20 against the Rangers this year. They can't get him out and they can't get him out here. Here's a bouncer down the line. The ball stops and Cirillo will go to second base. There's no fan interference call here. Did you say 11 for 20 or 12 for 21? For what? No, just kidding. I, the second you oh. said that, he oh, doubles down the right field no, line. I'm now saying 12 for 21 as he doubles to right. He's got three two. hits today. Goes the other way. Boy, he can go the other way. He's kind of a slashing type hitter. He's liable to hit the ball anywhere on the field. He's reached base in 34 of the last 37 games that he's played in. His on-base percentage is over 40%. And he's a player that people don't know a whole lot about. But if Jeff Cirillo keeps playing like he is right now, he'll become a household name. He looks like a good hitter. What a great move by the ball boy down there, too. So he didn't get hit. He leaped into the air, took his little stool, and jumped up. Very fine move. Shown bunt by Kozlowski, and the pitch is high for ball one. Wouldn't you like to see the ball boy with his glove charge that ball, fire to first base, see if he could make the play at Watch first this. base? He's in the air here with stool and with glove. Look, he's got his glove in his left hand. And what are they going to do to him? You know, you can't really. It's great. You can't put him in jail. I think he should have fielded that ball and thrown to first. <laughs> Might have caught the umpire by surprise. Uh-oh, here. This is well hit. Buford. Oh! He tries to turn the other way. It pops out of his glove. <laughs> and a run will score, and it'll be a stand-up triple. That would have been the catch oh, of the year right there. That was in the wind. Buford. He got back to it, and the wind shoved it over about five feet. 
That ball looked like a pop-up to center field. It was actually hit better than that, but it really got up in the jet stream. Watch Buford. He's looking over his right shoulder. Right at the end, he goes the other way and has the ball in his glove. That would have been a tremendous catch. He's in the air, and he somehow jackknifes over. You talk about Willie Mays' catch in the World Series. That would have had nothing on that catch if that ball stuck in his glove. The wind really blowing it. <laughs> he just jumped up in the air and changed directions. Like the roadrunner on that one. Here is the catcher, Matheny. The Rangers leading 13-6. to six. So they have a little bit of breathing room here, but... This team has been tough on them. Here's a broken bat. <laughs> what, Ten mile an hour line drive back to the mound. <laughs> this looked like that slow looked motion. Like, that looked like it was a soft toss back from the umpire after a pitch. He broke his bat. Watch how slowly this comes. This is not a line shot back at the mound. <laughs> Look at that. Russell's getting ready to jump. That ball hit about an inch above Matheny's thumb and went about 32 miles an hour back to Russell. A soft line drive you know you've got to mark down line drive back to the pitcher but I, I think you need an asterisk next to that one so a double a triple and a soft line drive and it's one ball and no strikes to list that. she was 0 for 3 and hit by a pitch 13 to 6 Rangers lead I'm still amazed how Buford could change direction once he was in the air that was amazing Boy, that was some, an athletic maneuver and the amazing thing was he's not even he doesn't even see the ball he knows where it is and that ball hit right in his glove and just didn't stick that's a nice try all three and no strikes look at this he's looking over his right shoulder now he realizes the wind is pushing it the other way turns all the way around and actually has that ball in his glove for a second until he hit the wall there's the strike and it's three and one Damon Buford has had quite a day he has hit a grand slam home run he's taken his RBI total from four to eight and almost made a tremendous play and now it's ball three and strike two to Listash. So the Rangers, who have had some leads evaporate against the Brewers, need five more outs. And they will go on the road with their best record of the year. They will have matched it at 40 and 24. They'd be 16 over. Here's a line drive to Elster off the shoes. He caught that, and there's the second out. Now Vina will hit. Boston and Chicago are having a long one today in Chicago. They're 2-2 in the 10th. Red Sox had a 2-1 lead late in that late in that ball game. Baltimore beat Detroit 10-7 and Toronto beat New York today 7-4. Those are the early afternoon finals in for you. Here it's 13-6 Texas with two out in the eight. If you're a Ranger fan, you root for that game in Chicago to go about 16 innings. The Red Sox use all their bullpen pitchers get back to Boston late <laughs> try to get every advantage you can here is Mark McLemore off of Vina bounce in the inning with a put out four three if you're scoring and it's one run on two hits we go to the bottom of the eighth inning a good day for the Rangers they're up 13 six this is it where brand new Miller beer begins where the hops grow that give new Miller beer its flavor. Because new Miller beer is brewed a totally new way, straight from the heart of the hops, for flavor unlike any other beer. Big flavor that goes down easy. We think so much of this new beer, we're just calling it who we are. Miller, brand new Miller beer. Reach for what's out there. Don't let a crummy mattress set ruin your life because you can own a brand new King Coil mattress set for a lot less than you think if, if, if you get over to the Furniture Supermart at 1212 Loop 12 in Irving, Texas. I'm telling you, we've teamed up with King Coil and we're stacking them deep. We're selling cheap. Now, there's no plush carpet on the floor, no violin music, just the lowest possible price on quality King Coil mattress set at the Furniture Supermart 1212 Loop 12. Now, remember, if you don't come see me, I can't save you any money. Are you going to use your incredibly universe credit card today? Uh, yes, I'll be using that today. Uh, you know, you can't beat the 5% discount. It's like, sure, you know, throw in a free 5%, I'll take it. Let's say you buy a $2,000 computer. You're basically throwing away a $50 or $100 discount if you don't use it. So, 
it's, it's a good system. Most people use it just to get the financing because they won't pay it off later, but even the people that can't pay it off in full in the beginning are crazy to not use it. Right. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Mclemore Valley and Newsom do up again. Pudge Rodriguez was injured in this game. Right now we need an update. Right now let's join John Radigan. John? Mark, I'll tell you what, Pudge, of course, took that bat, Damon Buford, inadvertently hitting, hitting Pudge in the head uh, from the on-deck circle. Pudge was taken from the game and taken from the stadium. He's taken to the hospital for x-rays. They're not overly concerned. It is precautionary. The good news is Pudge wasn't cut when he was hit by the back, bat, but they are going to take him for some x-rays just to make sure he was dazed when he was hit. So they want to make sure there's no concussion or anything like that, but uh, it is precautionary at this point. Marshall Bowes is the new pitcher as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And here's Mark McLabor. Mr. Bowes we've seen before, Tom. Yeah, he's a young brewer that's been a starting pitcher through most of his minor league career. He's pitching in middle relief now. Got a sinking fastball, pretty good velocity. A little bit of a problem with his control. Big, strong kid. Actually, in 21 innings, he's walked 17 batters, so he's had a little bit of a problem throwing strikes. Pretty Mark good velocity. McLemore lines one in the left field for a base hit. He's around first on his way to second base, and here's the throw, and he is out at second base. McLemore, a two-hit game. And he raced here on a good throw back in. Yeah, the Rangers are an aggressive team, Tom. You know that if you've scouted them, and they do put a little fear in you. You've got to do some things in the outfield. Well, you do. Mac, taking an opportunity, always aggressive on the bases. Good throw from the outfield right there. Right on the bag, and it had to be right on the bag to get Max sliding into second base. Here is the next hitter, David Valley, and he pops one up foul over the screen for... A one and one count. There's Mark McLemore. Mack is now 20 for his last 38. Way over 500 for his last 38 at bats. He is really having a time. Reached on an error today. Has a couple of singles. A fly to left at a strikeout. In Valley, looking for a two-hit game. This one puts it at ball one and strike two. Warren Newsom, the on deck hitter. Mr. Kaiser, who was Boy, sitting in the good. right arm early, got hit that right got, in the face. That got both of them. Gets Ooh. Matheny off the mask and then rebounds off of him. It's Ken Kaiser. Here's a ball is short. The throw to first, and Valley is out. Two up and two down. And that'll bring up Warren Newsom. The Rangers will have at least a seven run lead into the ninth inning. Seitzer, Nilsson, Vaughn do up. And here's the Deacon who has hit into a fielder's choice, walked twice, and struck out. And hits a little bouncer toward first. Jaha, the quick flip to the pitcher, Bowes covering, and that's the inning. So the Rangers have gone one, two, three, but with a hit. We go now to the ninth inning. It's 13 to 6, Texas. The ninth is next on the Lynn Rangers Television Network. Ridgecrest, California endured over 8,000 earthquakes. That's why more people here own a Sony Discman with Super ESP than any other portable CD player. It resists skipping. So ask anyone in Ridgecrest what's shaken, and they'll probably say everything, except the music. Buy a select Sony Discman and get this exclusive double CD set from Modern Rock Live. Offer available at Incredible Universe. Honey, your snoring's getting worse. You look tired. Do you or a loved one suffer from snoring, fatigue, daytime drowsiness? These are signs of sleep apnea. We've got to do something about this. I know, but who do you call for help? DFW. We work with your doctor, and testing can be done in your home. If I'd have known it'd be this easy, I'd have called sooner. 
For information on sleep apnea, call DFW Home Sleep Diagnostics at 1-800-460-4828. The game is hotter and more exciting than ever before on Texas 39. And this season is shaping up to be the best on record as the Texas Rangers continue to battle their way through the American League. Ex-Ranger skipper Kevin Kennedy and the boys from Beantown hope to gas up their sputtering season with the bat-busted muscle of slugger Cool Moldy. But the Rangers' close-knit offense, led by Clark, Palmer, and Tettleton, plan to unravel those darn socks and sew up a win. The Rangers and the Red Sox, Thursday night on 39, the official home of the Texas Rangers. Let's take a look at a game flashback right now, and it has been home run derby some of the day. Greg Vaughn went early, made it 2 to nothing. That's his... 51st, 52nd RBIs of the year in his 14th home run. But say hello to Mr. Tetlin today. Here's his first. That's his solo to left. That's his 11th home run. And then the Rangers got the lead for good in the third inning. Tetlin hit a two-run shot. This is off Angel Miranda again. He's now got 12 home runs, his third two-home run game of the year. And the Rangers right out in front. And then Damon Buford icing on the cake. Look at that pitch on his shoe top. Grand slam left field. His RBI count went from four to eight with that one. And there's Buford in center field as the Rangers go to the ninth, leading 13 to six. There's a happy Mickey Tuttle And Gil Heredia comes into the game. This is Kevin Seitzer for strike one. Seitzer one for two with a couple of walks, and here's Heredia's numbers, and the Rangers just pitch him. Well, I think Johnny wanted to get Russell out of there, so he's still sharp for tomorrow's game. Heredia has struggled a little bit lately. He's given up 12 runs on 20 hits in his last eight games and only 11 in the third innings. Overall, on the season, one and three with a 570 ERA. And a foul back to the right side. 0 and 2. Turned overcast the last couple of innings. Some dark clouds up above, but for the Rangers, it's been sunny skies. And there's Will Clark. will be going to Boston after the game. And hopefully improving with that left quad. The darkness of the rather ominous skies that have developed to the west. Well, we can take some rain, but it would be nice to get a one, two, three night before it does rain. This game yes. would not look well with about a one hour rain oh, delay. You're exactly right. On a getaway we'll day. We'll play through it. I saw Daryl Hamilton who got the whole day off. Well, when you can win 13 to 6 and one of the players having a tremendous year is out. There, he's a happy guy. There's Daryl Hamilton. <laughs> Boy, I am happy. You're right, Mark. I am really happy. One ball and two strikes. He's always happy. He though. is. He's having a year of his life, and he's beating the Brewers again. He likes that, the club he was with for so long. Two balls and two strikes. He was down on the bench the other day before the game, and one of the reporters asked him what Will Clark was like on the bench. And Hamilton said, don't even ask me. I don't even want to talk about it. He's driving me crazy. <laughs> Here's a little bloop to right. The Deacon tries for the sliding catch and can't get it. Here's a big turn at first, but they're down by a whole bunch of runs. They don't want to get thrown out on the base paths, and Seitzer has a base hit. So Kevin Seitzer with the single. Newsom coming on, trying for the sliding catch out there and couldn't pick it up. Little short. Looked like a hook slide. Ball came up, almost hit him in the face. Tipped, tucked behind him. You can actually get your glove further out in front of you, in my opinion. When you dive head first, it's a little bit more difficult to control your glove. And that sliding catch, as we said the other night, has become very popular. There's a bouncer to Tuttle and knocks it down, picks it up, underhand flip to Heredia. They just get it there in time, and Nilsson is out. So Tuttle blocking the ball gets. The first out, and now the Rangers need two more to win this game. Guests appearing on Ranger Baseball this year get a gift certificate from T-Bones Tap. Hot steaks, cold beers, cool patio, big city, home cooking. T-Bones Tap. T-Bones is located at the corner of Greenville and University in Dallas. Greg Vaughn, who homered back in the second inning, then bounced to short, popped to short, and a walk steps in. And they're going to hit Mark Loretta. Yeah, they switched the last inning. The bigger part. Yeah, Loretta, the Loretta edge, went in on defense a couple innings ago so to play shortstop. Not a pinch hit. He is in Vaughn's spot. And Loretta, who's had a couple of at-bats, gets one here. Loretta hitting here with Jaha still in the game on deck. Loretta hitting 375 with 
No homers and five runs batted in 32 ABs for the season. And he fouls one back into the crowd. A big crowd today of 34,842. Some have left early to try to beat those who are at work coming home. And a nice afternoon attendance, way over the average of the Rangers. Way over by about a thousand. One ball and one strike. Rangers have to be very happy with this home attendance. Here's a hopper to Elster. There's the second out, and the Rangers are now one out away from matching their best record of the year and hitting the road. Two out before Jaha. Let's go around the league with an update. Here's John Radigan. The Orioles have broken the tie in Detroit. This ninth inning double by Brady Anderson scored Greg Zahn all the way from first. The Orioles win by three. So the Tiger weekend is okay, but not what they wanted. One more to go. Here's Heredia against Jaha. The Rangers lead the game, and there's a comebacker that's ricocheted back toward the plate. The pick, the throw, and hello, Wincala. Heredia to title then, and the Rangers win the series, and they're 5-1 and one on the homestand, and they're back to their best record. They're 16 games over 500. they They're also 27-10 and 10 at home, Tom. Teams are not liking playing at the ballpark anymore. Well, we've said it the whole homestand. What a great advantage it is to play in front of big crowds, vocal crowds, supportive crowds, the Ranger players, and coaches appreciate it very much and they really do have a home field advantage now roger pavlik the best start in ranger history we'll talk about that bring you the line after this main coverage of rangers baseball has been brought to you by southwest airlines with low fares on every seat of every flight everywhere it flies fly southwest airlines celebrating 25 years of just plain smart and by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts 